I have a jack on the control arm that's got wheels on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got it lowered so we're pretty much even keel. I'm going to put the car in neutral and I'm going to pull from this jack so I make sure that we're not slipping and I'm going to have you push from the back. Welcome back to RV TV. Did you miss us? It's moving a little bit. Are you ready? One, two, three. Let me know when we're clear of that garage door. <laughs> That's got to be clear. Oh my God. Oh. Who says you need four wheels? We are Audrey, Stephen, and Bella. We're living full time in a vintage Winnebago we call Artemis. We've now survived two harsh Minnesota winters in our RV. We've resealed our roof, replaced our generator, built a boondocking battery, and made a residential refrigerator run off a motorcycle battery. We're now getting our RV ready for summer boondocking and travel. So stay tuned to see what we might get into this summer. We hope you enjoy watching. Give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to follow us on our journey. What are we doing today? Oh, let me get some work done. We might be on a break from making videos, Bella, but we're not on a break from working, are we? We got the dehumidifiers and the heater out of here. I should really get a carpet cleaner and try to clean this stain. A uh, spot cleaner or something. I don't know. Kind of looks like a flame scallop, right? It's kind of Anyway, first time I worked on this, trying to get under here, I struggled a lot. And it turns out it's really simple. It's just a thing you push in and then it just pops right up. I officially have this thing all torn down so that I can get access to these belts. You can see, I'm looking at the back of the alternator right here. Uh, there's that fan clutch that we were talking about. That thing has been acting up all last summer and it doesn't look like it's that hard to replace. So I might go to Napa or somewhere that I can get a better quality fan clutch made. But the reason that we're in here today is air conditioning belts on here, which I honestly don't care about because this air compressor is jack and we don't have air conditioning. But the, old, the belts that are important are, so here's the, that's the AC belt. You see that's just a little bit loose. But honestly, that's not as important as this belt, which is sweeping. Woo, loose belt. And that's your alternator belt. And then, I don't know if you guys can see it on the other side of that. But there is a, yeah, you can barely see it. Right there, down there, okay. That's the power steering belt, so I want to check that too. I don't know if I'll be able to take the camera when I take that, but we're going to just, uh, Check that, we'll probably tighten the power steering and the alternator belts today and just leave the alternator belt, or excuse me, the air conditioner belts all over. Got this guy, because the telescopes. Bro, it's okay. It's okay. You know, you used to be with me every day, but I was in a car while you were grunting like that. Yeah, do the mouth. I still gotta get back in there and grunt. <laughs> I still gotta do it. That boat's not loose yet. My knees are gonna be sore tonight. You want that foam thing up here for your knees? Yeah, maybe something. Yeah. Too strong. But I got it loose. Bummer. I was wondering. <laughs> I don't have a magnet in here. Guess who's gonna go get one right now? I got a loose stuff. So I got the alternator loose in here. Let's see it moving in that side. Um, I don't have a battery connected right now, so don't worry about these, they're not live. I was looking at this earlier, and I was like, I see this in here, but I don't see a, a, a decent place to pry. The only thing I could see is that they left you a hole in here so that you can sort of get to the bottom of the case, I guess. Uh, I gotta try and find a decent place to pry in here. Okay, I think I figured out. This is gonna be a tough one. So I'll give you this little window here. I don't know if you can see where my pry bar comes through. Mm -hmm. So it goes through there, and you have these little grooves on the case of the alternator. And so I've just gotten the pry bar in on one of these grooves. Now the problem is, is that the dash is in the freaking way here. But I think. That. I got it tight enough. I'm trying to find a place that I can really get a good pry on it. 
Ah, there we go. Okay. So I got right up against the clock here where it bolts together with a pry bar. And you can see I'm able to put some real pressure against that right now. And that belt is much, much tighter. So now, while holding pressure on one side, I can try tightening one of these bolts. This is one of those jobs where you would think you could do it with two people easier, but you can't get another person in here to really help you. I'm gonna get some good old fashioned monkey tightens because I don't want that to loosen. That is a much, much tighter belt. I am much happier with that. That's about four good hard, I'll get to this. But that one's tight. The way I know it's tight is uh, I wanna be able to turn the belt less than about a half an inch in here before it really starts binding up. So it's nice and tight. Now, I can recheck this top bolt, make sure it's nice and tight. Yep. <clears throat> the reason I was making so much noise is because I was having to support myself with the pry bar and then exert all my strength with the other hand. So it's just, it's not a very comfortable position to work from. You can see there's so much shielding on the side of this though that you would never really, you can't get at it from the outside at all. It would be nice to just sit on the ground and just do this right from the side underneath the tire. But next is, I want to try and get that power steering belt tight because this thing's got big giant tires and it needs good power steering. I don't know if you remember from last season, but sometimes when we would turn the wheel full lock, you get that little bit of a squeak. Problem is, is that the alternator's right on top here. Power steering is straight. How am I gonna tighten that? Well, I was looking everything up on the interwebs and seeing if anyone else has ever done it. And it looks like it's possible to tighten that belt by just loosening the top bolt and getting a half inch um, bar in there. And there's an actually adjustment point to get this in here. And I can use this bar to try and move it without having to loosen the bottom bolt. Because if I have to loosen the bottom bolt, I'm going to have to try and get it from the bottom. There's like just no room to get at it. It's, it's on the very bottom of the front of the motor. And... Uh, it sucks a lot, so yeah, here I go. Here I go. It looks like a big, big giant bolt for the top bolt too, so. Okay. It's such a big bolt and I can't double a wrench up and get a socket on it like that. What kind of sadistic GM engineer puts half of a bolt behind a pulley? So the bolt that you need to pull the power steering belt pump off or loosen it or do anything is behind the pulley itself. What <laughs> the fudge? Ah, I'm gonna win. Got it. Wow. Buy an RV, he said. Oh man, that high power steering belt. Okay, so, oh, red light. Can you pull on my stick? Thank you. So I was able to get an extension in there and I was able to get my uh, half inch breaker bar down here that my telescoping one. And I got this belt moving and tight. So I'm gonna go back in there with my other wrench and I'm gonna try and juggle balance myself while I tighten that bolt. And after I tighten that bolt, that power steering bolt will be, that power steering belt will be tight. And that is important because the power steering not only turns the wheels of this big giant thing, but it also assists with your brakes. This is the hard part. I can't, I can't see the bolt I need to be on. I had to loosen it quite a ways to get this to turn. I have to keep tension on this belt, otherwise it'll just stay loose. So my one hand has to be right there, no exception. On my other hand, blindly look for a bolt that I cannot see. I can feel my head touching something, but I have no idea what that something is. The dash, I'm guessing. I got my pry bar wedge a little bit here to help me hold tension on this bolt so I don't have to use all my muscles. And this is helping a lot, actually. I don't have to right, left brain all of my movements. Now I can focus on just getting this bolt tight. That if I forcefully press my forehead into the vent, I can see why there's no young people in the RV mechanic school commercials. 
Nobody young wants to do this. I don't, I don't blame them. Okay, I think that's tight enough. Oh, got it. <laughs> Go on fishing. Hi. Hi. Tool cleanup is my favorite part. That was such a hard job. I was so close to throwing in the towel on that and be all like, screw it. But it's so important. But then I was looking up how to, like, how to do it or any tips on how to do it. And I saw that it actually also runs the brake booster. And that's when I realized that it, I had to figure it out. So I did. All in all, I give this thing a B plus. I'll be back in here to do uh, valve cover gaskets and probably some heater hoses by the end of summer, I feel like. So it's all installed now. I just gotta clear everything out, bring the dog house back in. Here's that seatbelt on the left, man, is going to be sticking out. It's going to slide under that way, too. And the most important thing is, is that they can't... You can't force anything because this thing is very fragile and muy, muy important. <laughs> you hear this thing crack and, like... Your day is just done. It's like a window. It's like taking out a window every time. And yeah. once you, if you break it, An you window. have an open window. <laughs>